Today I will be showing you a demo how to create this lovely autumnal collage piece. This is actually watercolour which I painted on a separate piece of paper and I cut out all the various shapes like the top of the mushrooms, the berries, the oak leaves and other berries and things like apples and rose hips. If you look carefully you can see that I've tried to incorporate all the watercolour textures that I was able to create within these leaves and mushrooms and to set it off I've got a lovely graphic line going on which I was able to apply with a colour pencil and I'm going to show you how to do this. First of all let's start with the paper. I'm going to be using the Bamboo Mix Media. It's 265 GSM or 125 pounds, 90% bamboo fiber and 10% cotton rag. And it's perfect for this because it's suitable for drawing and painting techniques such as watercolor as well as acrylic and pastel. It comes in this handy size, but also there's a bigger version. Other things you'll need is a cutting mat or something like the back of a sketchbook such as this one here. Also I use a scalpel or you can just use a craft knife or a pair of very sharp scissors. You also need a watercolour set. These are Winsor & Newton Professional. I do recommend you have at least a student quality watercolour set so that the pigments are really vibrant and also two large brushes to apply the watercolour. Another thing you'll need is a glue stick. I use a Pritt stick, but any glue stick will be absolutely fine. This allows me to reposition uh, a few pieces just in case. Other things worth having are some coloured pencils. I've got a mixture of Derwent and Caran d'Ache also a regular HB pencil and a white gel pen. This is the Jelly Roll by Sakura. First thing we want to do is mix up a nice vibrant yellow. So I'm going to be using a uh, cadmium yellow. It needs to be sort of a medium consistency, quite pigmented. So lots of pigment in that, but also you need to be able to spread it around. And to this, we're gonna add an area of orange. What we want to end up with is quite distinct areas of yellow, oranges, reds, browns, sometimes even pink. So we're just gonna fill this up, but we're not gonna do too much mixing. As you can see, I'm just kind of dabbing it on and you think that looks a bit vivid, but once those pigments start to mix together on the page, just let them do their thing and you'll be really surprised with the results we're going to get once they are dry. I'm going to add a little bit of brown. So this is a little bit of Van Dyke brown, which might be a little bit dark when we add it to the red but it will diffuse into that red pigment. So don't worry too much about it. I'm just going to extend that out further. And within this, we are going to be able to pick out different areas for our mushrooms or acorns or rose hips. And another thing we're going to do in a little bit is do some splattering. Let's get a little bit more orange happening here, I think. Uh, we want pretty random results. I don't want to be too controlling. Uh, that's the wonderful nature of doing collage like this. And then going into a brown. This is going only my first sheet of paper. I'll probably do another sheet the next round. Now I mentioned splattering and I really enjoy this bit and just tap it. And same again with the yellow. It's just coming out there. And I might do the same with some of that maroon colour and it just really helps to bring up that texture and the paper also helps with that because it can take this type of treatment. I'm going to let this sheet dry and I'm going to start on another one. We're going to do exactly the same with this sheet and start off with a bit of burnt sienna. 
lovely rich brown mixing in some of the van dyke brown so that we've got a, a nice variety of browns reds pinks to cut out when we come to create our leaves and rose hips and whatever i really love seeing what effects i'm going to make it's to do with timing how the pigment moves how long the watercolour has been standing on the surface of the paper, the ratio of water to pigment and timings. But part of the fun is finding out, I think. Lovely, lovely golden colour. And I want it to be really, really rich because the bounty of autumn is beautiful to behold. And now I think we're going to do a little bit of flicking with my brush. This is the maroon. And I think I'm going to go in with some orange. Wonderful, wonderful. For some of you, this might be a completely new way of working and it might be quite difficult to grasp, but please hang on in there and trust the process I'm taking you through. If I put these textured papers next to the piece that I originally made, you'll get a better idea of what we're trying to create here. And so what I do now is basically look at my texture and think, oh, that would make a really nice berry or that would make a lovely apple or perhaps here would be a wonderful part of a mushroom that would look perfect, just like a mushroom cap like that. Now, I'm quite experienced in collaging like this. I would just cut out the leaf shapes, the mushroom cap shapes straight away. But if you are less experienced, what I would do is just take a normal HD pencil and very, very faintly draw the shape that you want. I don't know if, it, if you will be able to see that. And let's say I wanted some berries here. What I would do is this. If I start with these three berries, I'm going to place them on my flat piece of paper and we're going to take it from there. That's my first arrangement. And now I'm thinking, how am I going to fill up this space here? What's going to go next to it? I think a leaf would go lovely just here. I'm going to find a different part of this sheet of paper, something that will look great as a leaf. Maybe this section here, there's lots of texture. I'm gonna create one that's got three points, I think. Just for uh, the purposes of this demo, I'm going to quickly draw it out for you. Whether you are drawing the outlines of your berries or leaves or cutting it out straight away, do keep those shapes really simple. That's really going to help you with this particular collage project. Maybe it should go here. Don't know. The great thing is, because I haven't stuck anything down, I've still got lots of choices open to me. Let's say I will keep this leaf here. I would like to put some mushrooms there to fill up that space. So. I just spotted that original line I drew earlier, so I'm going to cut that out now. I don't need it to be accurate. The wonderful thing about collage is it's very open to interpretation and it's very forgiving. And I know it's like, oh, what are you going to do about the stalk? But that is where I'm going to be using the coloured pencil to add the stalk. And I think next to it, I'll, I want to do a smaller capped mushroom. I think this one the cap will be an, a different shape as well. To try and balance it out, because I've got deep reds there, a, a sort of pinky yellowy there, so I think I'm gonna go back to creating, um, yes, I think a leaf would be good. Quite nice, I think I'm gonna put some ridges in it. It's a little bit too angular for me at the moment. So for me, I love looking at the shape. Collage makes it so much easier to not get too caught up in the details because often we want something to look perfect. Um, it means that we, we don't fuss so much. That's what I feel anyway. I think some rose hips. So we need something red. If I look carefully, 
beautiful, beautiful section here. As the paint was drying, it's left all these back flows. So I'm gonna use this section here to make some rose hips or cut out rose hips rather. You'll notice that I am constantly moving the pieces of paper around as I make adjustments, as I make decisions, so that I feel like there's gonna be enough negative space, space where I can put this apple that I've just cut out. This is another beauty of working with collage. You can make fine adjustments, you can completely change your mind about the layout. And this particular oak leaf was a little bit skew with, so I just took it back off the paper, cut a bit more out so it looked a bit more balanced. And it really gives you a chance to get things right. It's not like pure watercolour where once it's down on the paper, there's very little you can do about it. So I hope that you'll find this method is again very forgiving i think the acorns could be a lovely beige color so i'm just going to create the the actual acorn seed i think for the cap the, you know that the little bobbly bit that attaches onto the stalk I'll, I'll use colored pencil to draw that part in so we've got just enough oh beautiful color there my next task is to start gluing these down. I think I'll start with these acorns in this corner. The great thing about print stick is you can lift it off and reposition it if you needed to. In surface design, what I'm creating could be likened to what's called a tossed repeat, where there is no direction that all the angles are slightly different and I really enjoy creating that sort of look in my collage pieces. Also, it's really important to pause every now and again to take a look at what is forming on that piece of paper. Is there enough space between some of these collage pieces so that you can add things like stalks or leaves? Now we're going to take our coloured pencil. I'm using uh, the Caran d'Ache in French grey. And I'm going to be adding some line work to help define some of the uh, items here. So these looked strange just by themselves, but once you start adding line like this, it's very evident that these are fruit on a stalk. And I think just to fill up a little bit of space there, I'm going to add a leaf. The way I'm using this colored pencil is not to shade anything in. I'm just adding line work to give a few details. Another great feature you can add is to use your white gel pen to create some of those distinctive markings that you see on top of toadstools. Yeah. And now we are looking at the veining of this yellow leaf. It doesn't have to be accurate. I, you know, I've no idea which variety of leaf this is but it's just the feeling that you get when you see this. It, it just screams autumn flavors and misty meadows. Now with rose hips, they've got these little bits at the end here. Rose hips are on stalks. Got a bit of a space here, so I've got an option to add a leaf. Now we've got our apple, that's the dip that the stalk would go in. That this pencil, yes it does, just shows up on that particular oak leaf. Marvellous. Now let's take a look at these acorns here. So these are like the little caps that they're on and they've got little knobbly bits on. Add a suggestion of that just here. I'm not gonna um, go over the whole lot. And also what we can do is use the, the white gel pen to add some ridges along the acorn just for that extra bit of information. Now we've got our last bit of toadstool. When I took a step back and surveyed this piece as it was, I realized that there was two areas of negative space. The first one was in this corner and I felt that there was just enough room to put some berries in there which I cut out 
and then I added the line work to help things along. There's a bit of a narrow space there and the only thing I can think of is to put a leaf, a narrow leaf, beautiful sort of auburn colour just there. Let me cut that out and see how it looks. Hmm, I think maybe I need to have it upside down. Yes, I think that would work well. Let's stick it down and add a bit of vein detail just to finish it off. I really hope you'll enjoy using this technique. I think it captures the beauty of autumn so wonderfully. I think being able to cut out various shapes from textured paper gives you so many options and it might be something that you've never considered before.